blessed and beautiful morning it is to be in the house of the Lord. And we're so excited to see everybody this morning. And I hope you've come expecting God to do something just as we have, church. If you will, please stand with us. Let's open up a song with How Great Thou Art. Oh, he is great this morning. Our God, he is great this morning. As we continue, let's sing, Great are you, Lord. He is the giver of life. He is the giver of love. And he brings light to all the darkness, church. Let's lift him up in praise. Oh 
Who's in my family? Yeah, if you looked at a picture of ours, we'd certainly look different. Oh, we have two biological children, we have three adopted children. So certainly if you look at a photo, you see brown hair, you see dark skin, you see blonde hair. And certainly we do get weird looks, but the great thing is seeing the Lord work and do things that you never even dreamed possible. The call to adopt came out of intimacy with the Lord, just like our calling to plant this church. I'm the church planting pastor of Refuge Church in the Ortega community of Jacksonville. We've been here about two and a half years. It was a community that was very unreached, and being there, the Lord just began to kind of do something in our heart. We didn't set out to plant a church for foster and adoptive families. It really just happened. The Lord. A lot of our church has become people from this community who are fostering or who are adopted. So we share that in common. People are longing for community. And when you have the layer of taking on people and children from difficult places, it's not easy. It's not comfortable. I think the reason they've shown up here, there's a big closet full of diapers and shoes and strollers and car seats and they see that and they come here to get a need met. Through that they build a relationship. Next thing we know they're in our church on a Sunday and I think about the amount of children who come to our church who if families didn't say yes to foster care and adoption, uh, those, those children would never hear about Jesus, they'd never hear the gospel. This is the calling that God has for us and when people give to Annie Armstrong, you're able to support those who are on the front lines of gospel work and people hear the gospel who would never have a chance to hear the gospel. Amen, amen. I love the phrase, welcome by the way. I love the phrase, the call to adopt came out of intimacy with the Lord. Boy, is that not all of our story? Listen, I needed to be adopted by Jesus. I was away from him. I was not part of the family. And, and he adopted me and brought me in and gave his only begotten son so I could be with him. And so then that makes us look out with the same eyes and say, who's around me that needs to be brought into the fold? Who's around me that needs to be adopted into the family of God? Our song just a minute ago said, all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Do you know the greatness of God? One of the things we want to get done today is not just go through a church service, not just check a box, but to say, I encountered the great and almighty God who adores me. And I was able to reflect that to somebody else. We do that in our conversation. We do that with a hug. We do that with our exhortation and our encouragement. We do that through giving to the Annie Armstrong offering, and we empower other people to go out in places we are not throughout this fallen, crumbling society that is indeed becoming dry bones that need to be resurrected. Is God capable of that, church? Yes, amen, he is. He proved it at the empty tomb that is still empty over there outside the old city of Jerusalem. So we're a little over a fourth of our way to our goal for Annie Armstrong. Our goal is $4,000. We're at about, I think, $1,145. Good job. We're gonna, we've started this last week. We're going to carry it through the month of April. So be in prayer how the Lord would have you give because this is going to help somebody you never meet this side of heaven come to a church that you help pay to plant, and they get to know Jesus and then pay that forward. Another way we get to know God, one of the probably the main ways we get to know God is through reading his word. And we are honored and very happy to have today Brother Terrence Lowry and his wife Anna here. They're right here. Kind of wave for him, Brother Terrence and Anna. There we go. And he is a Gideon, and he has been a Gideon for a good long while. In fact, just a little bit of his resume is here in the bulletin. They're members, members at uh, Calvary. Man, when you combine the word members and Calvary, you get membery. It comes out, but they're members at Calvary in Oak Grove, and Brother Terrence is retired military with three deployments over a 42-year career. He has been a Gideon since 2001, and he currently serves as the vice president of the Lamar County Camp. He also serves as the volunteer ministry coordinator for the Mississippi Youth Challenge Academy, and you will want to give him uh, your attention today in just a few minutes as he talks about just the, 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 the absolute power 
of God's Word. When you think about it, when you encounter God's Word, you're encountering the mind of God, the heart of God. We want to do that today. If you're our guest, we want to encounter you. Thank you for being here. I have a, a couple of requests. Make yourself at home. Take this little tear-off slip. Let's see if I can do this. And uh, put it in the offering plate a little later in the service after you fill it out and give us some digits. That's my permission slip to simply give you a call and see if we can get together and do something a little bit later in the week. Maybe some coffee or some lunch or dinner or something. So let's pray and then we will get back to worship. Father, bless you, praise you, almighty one. We love you. Uh, bless us today and let us encounter you. And let us leave this place more in love with your word because your word is indeed life. We love you, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, church. At this time, uh, we will have our birthdays and anniversaries. But before that, let's have our meet and greet. So as we're doing our meet and greet, if you have a birthday or an anniversary in the month of April, will you please come down to the front here? So let's stand. Let's have our meet and greet, church. Thank you all. birthday or anniversary this month, please work your way to the front. Any birthdays or anniversaries, please. Birthdays and anniversaries in the month of April, if you'll come down. All right, we've got a few takers. All right, church, let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary. God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. Let's give him a round of applause. If you'll remain standing with us, church. Let's continue our worship this morning with Lion and the Lamb. Oh, he's coming on the clouds. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. Every chain will break as broken hearts declare his praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. And every knee will bow before Him. Let's open up the gates. 
So open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. Continue this morning. We'll move into our offertory song. I love this song. It's 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 entitled "Living Hope," and it says, "How great the chasm that lay between us, and how high the mountain that I could not climb." Church, we can't climb that mountain on our own. There aren't a lot of things in this world that we can do on our own. Every mountain, every trial we face every valley that we run into. We look to the hills where our help comes from. We call out that name Jesus. And you know what? He pulls us through that chasm. He pulls us over that mountain. And he pulls us through that valley. He is our living hope. He is our hope in everything. And because of him, church, when we make that decision for salvation, we get the chance to spend eternity in heaven with him. If you but accept that, Let's look at ourselves, church. Are we living and thankful for that living hope this morning? How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus. 
Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of Step down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am your, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ. the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me Jesus yours Children can come down for Children's Church. Yeah, come over here, boys. Come over here. I think 
cheers. Good morning, everybody. How are y'all? Good. All right, I got a question. I know that the last two Sundays we really have been talking about King Jesus, right? And when he came to earth and died on the cross. But what king were we talking about before that? King David. King David. Very good. King Very good. So we're going to get back onto that and talking about King David. Does anybody remember the last story about King David yeah. we were talking about? It was about King David and a... And a uh, no, it was uh, Bathsheba and, and Uriah and how he stole something from somebody. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about David had a son and his name was Absalom. All right, and Absalom, um, he did something bad. He committed a murder. I wonder where he learned that from. Almost like his dad had done something similar maybe. I don't know. Maybe our kids are watching us. I don't know. Maybe they're not. Who knows? But Absalom murders somebody, and then he leads an army against his own father, David, and David has to defeat him. Pretty tough, pretty tough little situation he's dealing with. But God protects David and protects his throne, and he gave David victory over Absalom, even though that was his own son, and Absalom died because of it. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. I want you all to pay close attention. And when we get done, our mom and dads are going to ask us, what we learned about, right, mom and dads? We're gonna invest in them and invest in what they're learning in this morning because we want them to retain it, not just entertain them back there. We want them to grow in the Lord. So make sure that when they get home, you ask them what they learned and let them tell you about David and King David and Absalom. Let's pray, and we're gonna be dismissed out this door right over here, okay? Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you that we get to come here and learn about you. We thank you that we get to gather together as a body of believers, as a family in Christ, and, and just worship you, God. We're here for you. We're not here for any other reason. I pray that you allow us to be able to grow in your word today. Allow them to be able to have ears that listen and a heart that can comprehend the lesson you have for them, for even these children to be able to understand. God, we know you have the ability. We know that you're capable, and we ask you to do that. And it's all this that we ask in Christ's name. Amen.
lost my home, lost my job, and ended up on the streets. I found it a suitable place for me to hang myself. We found our son had taken his own life on our property. Just as the distribution was ending, someone placed a testament in my outstretched hand. That one testament had a great impact on our lives and our family. This is an opportunity for me to have a new testament. As I began to read the book of Revelations, I could see how much God loved me. It was like for the first time in my life that, that I really felt acceptance. I'm fixing up this drug and I see the Gideon's Bible. But there was, there was a force compelling me to pick this up. You know, he says he'd take away all the weights and the burdens that you have. They were gone. It has given me hope for daily living in the worst circumstances of my life. I knew that there was someone who loved me. All I said was, yes, Lord. And, and it was like a, I was born again right there. somewhere around this this big world we have some of the ways we do it is college distributions we give out Bibles at USM we gave out uh, over 2,000 Bibles last year maybe a little loud and we had a great distribution doing that let me tell you a, a testimony of Gully the see, Gully was from Peru he was in he received his testament and from a you get in distribution, and he read this Bible, and he accepted Jesus as his Savior. He started going to a local church, and he began to grow. He graduated. He received his assignment. He was a, a oil petroleum engineer. So he was going to this village down in Peru, and the pastor told him this is a pretty bad place. A lot of witches, uh, warlocks. So he prepared him for that. So Gully got there and he set up a sign outside of his hut. It said it's Bible study, it's free. Nobody ever came. Two weeks later, as down in that part of the world, the monsoon seasons, rainy seasons, he was sweeping out his entrance of his hut and uh, this dirty old mangy dog came and ran in and took his little Bible that he had, he'd received. The only Bible he had. He chased the the dog and it went into the witch doctor's house and he says I'm not going in there he came back and he was very frustrated so he just waited and two weeks later a knock came on his door it was the witch doctor he had been reading that testament and he asked questions of gully and the witch doctor accepted Jesus as his savior but you know, it doesn't stop there because the witch doctor had a daughter and Gully married the, the daughter. And there's now a church in that village because one testament, a church like yours, provided this testament through your gifts. Praise God what he can do. There's many ways that you can give as, as a church service like this. Uh, you're getting uh, Giddens here in Lamar County. We are all uh, business professional men, and we are always needing help because we're, as our ranks are getting older, we have distributions at motels, uh, also prisons. We go to Leakesville, and we go to Parchment Prison every year, and there's some other prisons that we go go to, uh, like the one over in uh, just uh, west of here. The that's a maximum security prison, actually. To give you an example of a how 
these jails and prisons can can encounter somebody. Uh, you may not know her name, uh, but her name is Mary Kay Beard. You'll know the ministry that she actually helped start, and another organization runs that now. But Mary Kay was once on the the FBI's most wanted list. Now this was probably back in the uh, the fifties, and you may not know this, but anyway, her testimony she was finally arrested. She was known as a notorious safe cracker. She grew up in a good home. She was actually training to be a nurse, but she got in with the wrong crowd. Well, Mary wound up in jail in Alabama, and in, in this jail, she saw something under her mattress, and she took it out, and it was a, a Gideon Bible, some, something like this probably, and she began to read it. And she, re she read across this part in Ezekiel where it says, A new heart I will also give you, and a new spirit I will put in you, and I will take away your stony heart out of your flesh. Well, further reading God's word, she knelt down and she accepted Jesus as her Savior. But in her stay there, she also noticed that the women would save all their things that they would get like soap and shampoo and different things and she asked why do you do this won't you use it he said well this is the only way we can give our kids anything for Christmas so out of that was born this ministry you may have seen the angel tree ministry one scripture left not specifically for her it's given to somebody else but they left it and somebody else comes along that's why God's word as as we look in Isaiah 55 it says so shall my word that goes out from my mouth it shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish which I please it and it shall prosper in the thing which I sent it God knows where his words going to go and his Holy Spirit can lead people like the man in the video. He was compelled to read, to pick up the Bible and read it. That's how strong the Holy Spirit can convict people. You know, that's what the Gideons are all about, really, is about bringing men, women, boys and girls to saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Just uh, some other distributions that we do here in the area. We used to be in the schools until the, the courts have basically pushed us out of our public schools. But we still give out Bibles to the fifth graders here at Lamarck Christian School. Uh, some of the other private schools, we still give Bibles to those. So praise God for that. We also um, give out Bibles to military. Um, I was actually privileged to help on a distribution where we gave out Bibles to the military before they deployed when I actually deployed with them back in 2018 we gave out 1500 scriptures to the 155 as they deployed over to Kuwait and Syria and those parts of the region so it's praise God that we're still able to do that we also have a uh, are able to dis distribute Bibles to Youth Challenge we're able to give out somewhere around uh, 400 Bibles a year to the two different classes they have there at Youth Challenge. And we have also have some other ministries going on there that we are able to distribute Bibles. Um, we also give out Bibles to, to the uh, firemen and police in the area. Uh, we are able to do that, and we praise God. We place Bibles in, of course, motels, nursing homes, and the hospitals. So anytime if you see a Bible like this, it's because... Your church has helped us place these Bibles. We, we are able to put out Bibles. We put uh, these Bibles, we go to the motels every six months. And we usually average about 30 or 40 Bibles that we either have to replace because they've been damaged or they're missing. Uh, you know, the Gideons are probably the only um, organization that uh, don't mind you stealing their Bibles because we want you, want you to take them home and read that Bible and they get to know Jesus as your Savior. But we do need your prayers, and we, we 
we would like to get back into the schools. So to pray that that, that will one day happen. We, we need that. We need that desperately to get to our young people. Because the people, the, the boys and girls we see at Youth Challenge, many have never even been in church their whole entire life. And it's hard to believe in this. And we're in the Bible Belt. But there's people that are not in church. Another example of a, a, a Bible that was actually found by, I believe it's John. He's, he owned a mechanic shop. And he had a car that he had been repairing. And he was through the repairs and told the people, hey, come get your car. This is how much it'll be. Well, they decided that they didn't really think it was worth that. And so he, they just let him have the car. So he, he started cleaning the car out. And he found a Bible, much like this one. He took it. He just laid it on his desk. Never thought much about it. But one day he picked it up. And he started reading the Bible. And this has the New Testament, Psalms, and Proverbs in it. But he read this Bible. And he was able to understand it and accept Jesus as his Savior. Another example of not intentional, but he knew that this was God's word and he accepted Jesus as his Savior. You know, God's word, wherever it's put, like the Bible says, where God intends it to come, it will prosper. And it did at that time too. Other ways that you could participate other than just giving, we have what we call the get-in card program. Now, the get-in cards are cards that you can give in any occasion. Uh, actually, they're called uh, occasion cards. Um, you can give them in memory, of course, but you can also give it to somebody that's got everything anyway. Uh, in recognition, um, there's just different ways that you can give in that aspect. So the getting cards are actually back here in this foyer, back here, and we encourage you to use those. Uh, maybe in place of flowers, you know, you put flowers on a grave and, and they're gone in a couple of weeks. But when they get that card in the, in the mail, when it's mailed to, to them and say, hey, get in Bibles were given in the honor of your loved one. That really means a lot to them. In fact, I want to show a short video on, on the Gideon cards. Give a Gideon card, the greeting card that changes everything. Gideon cards are beautiful expressions of faith, hope, and love. Unlike other greeting cards, Gideon cards are actually free. And when you give a Gideon card, you donate scriptures that God can use to change lives for eternity. I picked up a Gideon's Bible and read it and became immediately peaceful in a way that I had never experienced at the time. Each year, Gideon's place some 90 million scriptures into the hands of people in over 105 countries the world. Gideon Cards. Send the word and change a life. Visit sendtheword.org today. Gideon Cards. Send the word and change a life. Some of the other areas of the distribution we have uh, is around the world. We have scripture blitzes in other countries where we give out thousands and thousands, sometimes over 100,000 scriptures. Uh, in a city uh, that's maybe 7 million, that's really not many when you compare it. But there's many scriptures that we give out over the uh, course of the year. In fact, we give out... Um, to 199 uh, countries around the world and we have uh, 109 different languages. We also have a thing, what we call the Get In Bible app and it's an app that uh, most of you, if you don't have a Bible app on your phone, it's a good witness, witnessing tool because it has helps in it just like the small testaments have and it also has the plan of salvation. So if you're personally uh, witnessing to somebody and 
you don't even have to have it in your language. If, there's, if they speak Spanish, which we have a lot of Spanish-speaking people in our area, it's in Spanish, and you can just put in the Bible verse, and you can actually read it, let the Bible, your phone, read it to them, and it's a good witnessing tool. So we thank God for technology, even though sometimes it doesn't work for us here. Uh, it's, it's a great way, a great witnessing tool that you can get. We have some of those cards. Also, another way that you can participate, if you want your own Bibles, is you can also, it's called the Friends of the Gideon. Now, if you want to talk to us about that and you want to get your own Bibles to give out, we can tell you how to do that. Um, we'll talk with the pastor of some churches. Um, I know the church up at um, Military Baptist Church they supply all their people with Bibles. Of course, it's through donations. And they have their, anytime they need Bibles to give out, they can do that. So that's a, a good witnessing tool for your own self. We also have a, a program called The Life Book. The Life Book is a book, it's based on the book of John, that it's designed for teenagers to go and witness to their friends in school. So, you know, the, the schools, we, we may be blocked from them, but, but this is a way that your teenagers can hand out literature to their friends to witness to them. So that's another uh, area of ministry that the Gideons, Gideons do. So it's many, many different ways that we um, distribute here locally around the world. And we encourage you to do also because uh, I know some of you have heard some of the things that they've been saying about the eclipse and all that. Well, so we got one more day to witness to one more person. I just want to leave you with uh, another uh, sto uh, testimony about Gideons that were in a uh, went to a hospital, and let me tell you what the this is a a testimony that this man had grew up in a Catholic home. He had never read the Bible, but while he was in the hospital, he received testament from. A, he was there for a gunshot wound, actually. But somebody gave him a testament and from the Gideons. He started reading the testament and was impacted by the words he found in Philippians 4.13. As a result, he accepted Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior in the hospital. His uh, conversations had a profound impact on his family. His parents and three brothers, wives, and four children also gave their lives for Christ because a Gideon Bible placed in a hospital. I've got one last video if we could show it and uh, I'll turn it back over to you, Pastor. Ephesians 2.12 says that to be without Christ is to be without hope. To live without Christ is to live in a state of uncertainty, expectation of the future, and with no real solutions to life's most difficult challenges. Much of the world exists in this state of hopelessness. But to find hope in the person of Jesus Christ is to find hope in its purest form. Hope in Christ is more than a momentary respite from pain, more than a wish of things to come. It is true and lasting. It provides us with a strong and assured expectation of what God has promised, and it changes who we are and how we live. This hope is part of our salvation. It provides power for living. It gives us joy. It gives us protection. It gives us strength and boldness. It gives us comfort and peace. It gives us confidence in ministry. As children of God, we abound in the hope of Jesus Christ, daily experiencing the blessing of calling Him Savior. If we believe His Word is alive and absolute, we should not be able to contain the hope inside of us.
with every Bible we place, with every scripture we distribute, and with every word of witness we share, we offer true and lasting hope in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as long as there are people in the world who do not know Jesus, who do not have hope, our work is not finished. story um, that I grew up in a home that was not just uh, lost, it was aggressively against organized religion, and that I then went on a band trip at the Mississippi Lions All-State Band and um, encountered actually a Purvis girl named Hope Fairchild, and I'd grown up in Hattiesburg and she grew up in Purvis, and her youth minister later became my youth minister, Ray Cummings, who became my pastor eventually, and wrote my seminary letters, my recommendation letters. But I didn't know anything of the Word of God, but the first thing that she was talking to me about was my need for forgiveness. And so the first thing I encountered of the Word of God was a call to salvation because that's what I needed. That's what I could handle from God's Word at that moment. There was not a lick of sanctification in it. I didn't know. I probably didn't want to know, but I knew I had sin on me. Even in my ignorant lostness, I knew I had sin on me. And so, when the offer of grace, just forgiveness for the sake of forgiveness, was shown to me, I prayed on a band bus somewhere in Iowa or Missouri. I do not know what state I was in when I accepted Christ. About 1 a.m. on July 11th of 1993, and I felt clean. I didn't even know that scripture said, behold, you're a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. But I felt clean. I encountered the thoughts of God, the word of God, and I felt his cleansing. Salvation is the first thing someone needs when they come to the word. The second thing is sanctification. You mean I gotta live different? I have watched men and women both encounter that and walk away from it. In fact, Hebrews talks about those people, that second group of people of the three mentioned in Hebrews, those that are near the orbit of the church, those that talk about salvation, but when it comes down to brass tacks, they walk away, and it says there is no hope for them. We've got to conform our will to the Word of God. The second thing we begin to encounter when we deal with the Word of God and we begin to let it in between bone and marrow is we begin to see that we need to change something. He is not just our Savior. He is our Lord. He is our Master. And He says, live this way, not the way you used to live. Can He make dry bones live again? Absolutely. And through working through his word, through seeing, as Brother Terrence quoted in Isaiah 55, that, that, that well, actually, yeah, Isaiah 55 also mentions his thoughts and his ways are higher than ours. And we begin to grow into that. We've encountered the word of God through for our need for salvation. Then we encounter it for sanctification. And then we encounter it for sending. I love the fact that y'all are handing out Bibles at USN. Do you know the world comes to a, a university of that size? And so whether you're involved in international missions or not, if you're supporting Gideons, you are supporting international missions because those people that get those Bibles eventually go home and share that Bible with their family. We encounter the Word of God for salvation. We encounter it for sanctification. And once it changes us, we learn to love it. And then we can't help but send it out. Brother Terrence, I've always wanted to do something I don't think I ever have. I maybe have done it once in a small way. Anytime I'm in a hotel, and you tell me if this is kosher or not, if this is okay. Anytime I'm in a hotel, I am tempted to write a message in the Bible, in the hotel, this is what this means to me. Does that get that Bible yanked, or can it stay there? No, 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 I'm going to tell you what it is. It's a testimony. What I want to do is a testimony. And everybody who names the name of Jesus ought to be able to do this within two minutes. Say two minutes, church. 
Good, you're awake. Okay, so two minutes. I want you to be able to do what I just did. Here's what I was before I met Jesus. Here's how I met Jesus. Here's the difference he made in my life. Can you say that to somebody in two minutes? Can you write that on the front cover of a book? Can you write that on a blank page by the copyright page so that the Lord can use it when people are alone in a hotel room and they've got nothing to do but have time to think and maybe hear from God? Can they hear your story of here's what I was before I met Jesus, here's how I met him, and here's the difference he made. All of us ought to be able to do that if we name the name of Jesus, and all of us ought to be able to give something to help this ministry. So uh, I asked Brother Terrence what we're going to do, what we're going to have our time of invitation right now, and then after that, he is going to go stand at that door with an open Bible, and then Josh Butler is going to stand at that door with this open Bible. And if you would like to make a donation... This does not go to me. It goes to Terrence. It's my Bible, but we'll give it to him. The Gideons. The, not Terrence. It goes to Gideons. And we are going to provide for the expansion of God's word into his kingdom. He gave me a little bit of a challenge earlier this morning. Can I quote you? He said, uh, you know, sometimes we go to smaller churches and you know, the per capita giving is actually higher at the smaller church than it is in the bigger churches. You know how when you're doing CPR and they train you to do CPR? They say, don't ever go. Somebody call 911. Why? Because people go, well, I bet somebody else will do it. But when you're sitting there talking to 15 or 20 people, they, they know it's on me, right? So don't fall to that temptation today. Don't fall to that temptation to go, somebody else will do it. We had a campaign a long time ago called Each One Reach One. Well, how about each one reach one time into your wallet and help these boys out, right? And let's make sure if everybody gives a little, then the mission goes forward. I'm going to have a word of prayer. They're going to come. Chris is going to come. And Hannah, we're going to do our invitation. And then we'll do announcements. And if you're not prepared to give today, you can give later. Go online, I'm sure. Right? All right. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the work of Gideon's International. Thank you, Lord, for the, the, the hearts you may be pulling on of the, the men in our community and, 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 and even their wives being involved through them. Lord, that they may want to be a Gideon one day. Lord, expand this, Father, this, this love for your word. Lord, change us with it. You've already saved us with the word become flesh. Change us with it, and then help us be a part of sending this. Father, we come before you grateful for the power of your word. It shall not return void. And we come before you knowing you own our entire lives. Father, we love you. We thank you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you're here and you've not yet accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you don't have to encounter a Gideon Bible in the hotel room. You're here. You can encounter the people of God who have been changed. Come to Jesus. Let him pay for your sins. He wants to. Come down for prayer. Come be a part of this church family. As the Lord leads, would you come? Brother Chris. Amen. Will you please stand with us, church? Sure. 
is all forsaken. Take me, Jesus, take me now. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior. couple quick announcements. Uh, there will be some special guests during these announcements in a moment. They need to start making their way down here. But first of all, this Wednesday night, we have uh, April 10th, spaghetti and meatballs. Uh, youth are putting it on, so students, I know we just served not too long ago, but this is our normal time, so be here, come help serve. Uh, but we're going to uh, have spaghetti and meatballs with uh, corn and some dessert, so come hang out. These Wednesday night meals are, we have about one more month after this month, and then we'll stop for the summer, so be aware of that. Also, if you are going on the Montana mission trip, if you are going on the Montana mission trip, again, if you are going on the Montana mission trip, going to have a meeting right over here. Right over here, is for sure you want it? Is this good? Let's go to the couches. Y'all going to go to the couches in the back, back here. Immediately follow service. Going to go to the couches in the back, back here. Immediately follow service. So be aware of that. That is the people going on the Montana mission trip. Also, do not forget, Know Thy Enemy study picks back up tonight at 5 p.m., so be aware of that. It's starting at 5 p.m., picking back up. And also, the Ezekiel study starts tonight at 6, so come and be a part of that. It's going to be a really cool time, really fun time, and be involved in that as well. Also, do not forget about the deacon nominations and get those turned in. We have forms in the front back here and in the information center. If you cannot find one, let us know. We'll get that plugged in. Also, if you have a child or a grandchild that's participating in soccer, we kicked off this past weekend with our clinic, and we'll be continuing on for these next several weeks on Saturdays, going all the way to the first Saturday in May. So be aware of that. Come hang out with us. We'll be there from about 9 to noon, and so that's when our games start. If you're a student that's helping, you need to be there a little bit earlier. You need to be there about 830 and so, but everybody else, you get there at 9, come fellowship and hang out. It's a really cool time, just a great time to fellowship with the people. Do not forget about deacons meeting next Sunday at 8 a.m. And then also, if you look on your bulletin, we have a blood drive coming up April 24th from 4.30 to 7.30. Uh, I believe there's a sign-up sheet back here, correct, Miss Judy? We haven't put the sign-up sheet out yet. So put it in your mind that we will have a blood drive that day, and so the times may be a little different by an hour, so be aware of that. Also, Center Kids, if you don't have your deposit in, the uh, the last second deposit is due May 1st. Be aware of that. Need to see Miss Tabitha West or Miss Ashley McDonald. Also, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Chris, let him make an announcement about choir real quick. Sure thing. Uh, tonight, guys, will be the beginning of our choir rehearsals in the... Uh uh, choir room back here so it's six o'clock if you feel led to come and sing and uh just be a part of what's going on i didn't know what you were doing i thought you were coming up here to get me <laughs> we got that i know i know it doesn't look like it but we did but no if you're looking for somewhere to come and, and, and find somewhere to plug in and worship uh feel free to come to choir practice you don't have to be uh, some experienced singer it's any ages whoever wants to come and just uh, lift up in song and, and just be a part of what God is doing at Good Hope. This is a great opportunity to sit in and do so. So at 6 o'clock tonight, if you feel led, please come join with us. We're going to sing a little and just get to know each other well and have a good time. So thank you all. Okay, I just wanted to remind everybody about the marriage conference. It's going to be April the 27th from 9 a.m. to 4. I know that sounds like a long time, but we have really condensed it down to what I thought was really pertinent information. Um this has really worked wonders for our marriage, mine and Lance's. And I guess about when Lainey was a baby, I was like, Lord, I don't know how people do this. I'm not going to be able to do it. And so I had started looking at some resources, and I found the EXO marriage, and they have been wonderful, y'all. So just come. Um, there's a sign-up sheet back here in the information center. Um, we did ask for, like, the number of years married because we're going to do a game. 
So don't let that be off-putting to you, but um, we want your name, phone number, and if you want to, it's $25 a couple, and that'll help cover the meal. And, um, yes, yeah, so definitely get signed up, and if you have any questions, just see me or Lance. Um, one more thing, if that's okay. Um, <clears throat> you'll probably see the Make Jesus Known um, for any Armstrong, but there's also some um, of these little pamphlets. And this is a prayer guide, so pick that up. There's some out here in the front. There's some back here in the information center. But it has all of these stories. Yeah, we're going to see some more videos in the weeks ahead. Um, but it talks about how each of these missionaries are going into the world. There's lots of different types of stories. You know, we heard about adoption and fostering this morning, I know, which is dear to a lot of our hearts here. Um, but, y'all, it's... This is a prayer guide. tells you what they need prayer-wise. If you can't give financially, you can give prayerfully. So, marriage conference and Annie Armstrong. I got it. Like two more things. Wait your turn. All right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Last couple things, real quick. First of all, uh, if you are a parent of a student, I need to see you immediately following service right over here now, since they're going to be in the back. So just come right over for like two minutes. Also, guys. Uh, whether you realize this, a lot of this that happens, our technical stuff, uh, happens because of guys in our sound booth. And one of our guys is going to be leaving a couple months going off to college. And so that's Timothy Bush. He's been doing a lot of that stuff, and we appreciate him. But we need help. Uh, and so we need somebody to come in and kind of fill in that role while he's going to be out. So Ladies, you can serve too. Yes. So if you're interested, just uh, let us know. Let's get plugged in. Let Chris know. Get you plugged in. Let Timothy know. They'll train you all that stuff. And the last thing I want to say. We have a lot of openings in, for children's church and nursery volunteers for the next three months. So the next three months, we have a lot of openings. We don't have a lot of people serving. So if you're interested and would like to serve, please see my wife, Cody, or put your name on uh, in the sheets, in the sign up, uh, on the sign-up sheets in the foyer for the children's church hallway. So that's all I got. we got a lot going on. That's a good problem to have. Amen? All right. Would you please stand? And I'm going to ask Brother Brett Cox to close us in a word of prayer and just pray over the offering for the Gideons, too, please.